This is Clark the Knife, and this is a quick video answering a question that I think people sort of should be asking whether they're asking it or not, which is let's say that you're somebody who likes made American knives, you like bigger knives, you want something in this three and a half to four inch range. What's the best knife right now? Or more particularly, you're looking at these two knives right now, which is, I mean, if you're looking for high end, made in the USA production knives, I'm gonna assert that these, the Hinderer Project X and the Demco AD20 or AD20S are the best options you're going to find on the market right now. Which of these is better? Which of these do I prefer? Why would you choose one of them over the other? I'm gonna try to go through that relatively quickly or at least relatively completely here. First thing that I want to say right up front Two things. One, just so we know the audience here, these are respectively a $450 and a $500 knife. If you are interested in these knives, you are playing in the realm of high-end production. This is out of the price point of a large share of people. These are unnecessarily good knives. You can get most of the performance for these knives from, you know, something like a Spyderco Military or, you know, even shaman or something like that these are better knives than those absolutely but you don't need to spend 450 to 500 dollars on a high-end knife that out of the way second thing neither one of these are a bad choice i've already done my review of the project x it's going to be posted right before this one and it is i think the single highest rated knife that i have reviewed on the channel to date i call it the peak of hinder's design it is really an exceptional knife that does everything the hinderer does well and does some things that they traditionally do poorly much better than i'm used to expecting from them and the demco ad20s especially now that it's being seen in higher production volumes um, i don't think this knife really needs much of an introduction these days demco's grinds remain fantastic as they've always been demco's handle ergonomics remain fantastic as they've always been and the shark lock is something that is completely distinctive so both of these options are really really good and i think just about anybody would be happy with either of them they're both going to do absolutely everything that you need from a functional perspective in a three and a half inch to four inch heavy duty blade and they also are made as well as you could possibly ask for at a production scale at the 400 dollars to 500 dollars price point you are well within the realm of diminishing returns for pocket knives at this point where you know what you get stepping up even further in price are marginal improvements in fit and finish or functionality those improvements are there but this is more than all the knife that anybody needs from either of those options so they're both very good choices but as you can see <clears throat> they are very similar knives in a lot of ways so let's go through those similarities first first blade length here these knives are both let me get a little bit more light on the situation these knives are both three and a half inches plus or minus a tenth of, or a tenth or two tenths of an inch or so they're both a little bit longer in fact than three and a half inches um the the ad 20 s is listed and i've got an s here i'll talk about the s versus the full thickness in a bit but the um the ad 20 s here is listed as 3.75 the demco project x is listed as 3.66 Honestly, that mostly comes down to just the larger sharpening choil in the Project X compared to the AD20S. Um, you can see the blade length from the pivot out to the tip is almost identical between the two of them. The handle length is also almost identical between the two of them. These are both about, you know, eight and two thirds inch knives overall. Weight wise, they're both pretty um, heavy. Um, you could call them robust, but about five and a half ounces for the Demco AD20S in most configurations and about six and a half ounces for the Project X in most standard configurations and a full thickness AD20 is going to be even closer in weight to your Project X. They're also in this config very similar in thickness. Now blade stock thickness, your AD20S is going to be quite a bit slimmer than your Project X. You've got blade stock here that is 120 thousandths on the AD20S and blade stock that is 165 thousandths 
on the or 120,000 on the AD20S, 165,000 on the um, on the Project X. If you look at your AD20, in fact, you'll see that blade stock is the same thickness as your Bulldog, your TRM Bulldog, which is a much smaller knife. That said, the way that they carry that stock out is quite similar. If anything, your AD20S carry in most blade shapes carries that blade stock out a little bit further, so you've got that full thickness, usually for most of the length of the blade, and then just a little bit of tapering toward that tip. Whereas in your Project X here, you've got full thickness for about two thirds and then a little bit more distal taper toward that tip. So you compare tip to tip, the tips are pretty similar even though the blade stock on the Project X starts, um, starts thicker. The grinds now, they are, honestly, they are both really good grinds. That's the first thing to say, um, to say right off the bat. And there's not one grind for your AD20. Um, one of the big differences between the Project X and the AD20S series is that the Project X is currently offered in only a single grind, this clip point, whereas the AD20S, I've just got two of the grinds here. I've got the drop point and the slicer grind, but you can also get a uh, shark's foot, which is basically their sheep's foot blade shape. Um, you can get harpoon, um, harpoon clip points. You can get full flat grinds. You can get all sorts of grinds with your AD20S here when there's just one grind available right now on the Project X, though of course this hinderer, we should expect that to probably change over time. I would expect if nothing else, there will probably be a slicer variation at some point. There will probably be a spanto or maybe even a harpoon spanto variation at some point, but there's more variation. But what I will say is that both Hinderer and Demco grind their knives very well. These are both flat grinds and they are both relatively aggressive flat grinds. If you look here, you can see that, you know, decent, decent divot on the plunge there. Demco, and especially if you've ever handled Demco's customs, Demco flat grinds his knives relatively aggressively where they can take decently thick stock and come down to some pretty thin cutting edges. If you look at the, if you look at the base of the blade there, you can see that it does get pretty thin behind that edge. But so does the Project X. Part of why my review of the Project X was so glowing is there so much space for this to drop, which is much more than in your AD20S, that this takes that 165 thousandths down to a very thin and thin and slicey edge, much more than you typically expect from a hinderer. Um, put it this way, if I were comparing an XM18 or an Eclipse to an AD20S, then I would say, you know, if I'm comparing these two knives, then the pretty much any Demco blade variation is going to have significantly better slicing performance than even this hollow grind um, Hinderer Eclipse. But when you're comparing the Project X to the AD20S, even though there's more grind variety on the AD20S, the quality of the grind, the amount that that grind is able to take that thicker blade sock down to a thin edge, is of roughly similar quality and of very high quality between both your Hinderer Project X and your Demcos. Um, very similar handle designs. Both handles have fundamentally a, you know, a, a big front finger index, which is going to be a single finger that's going to fit in there, then a big belly for the rest of your fingers, a relatively neutral back with a bit of a sway toward the butt, um, the butt on the Demco is a little bit sort of more hooked, but there's still that general hookiness to the Project X. The fact is functionally both knives grip very much the same in the sense that all your fingers, your first finger is secure right behind a front guard, the rest of your fingers nestle along a belly, and these two notches at either end keep your fingers captive. Exact same feel with the Project X with that flipper tab hand serving as a blade guard. And so these end up both feeling extremely secure in the hand, as you would want and expect from a hard use knife. That's all the stuff that is similar. And I think, again, the overall conclusion here 
is that for what you're going to use a knife of this size and weight for, which is really, you want a knife that is principally going to be very good at those heavier duty tasks, whether you're doing harder, you know, tasks around the house, stuff like, you know, carpet, drywall, cutting through a brace of rope, cutting through, you know, wires and stuff like that, whether you're using this for more aggressive chores around the garden or even just like aggressive, just general EDC stuff, cutting through rougher materials, abrasive materials, stuff where you really want a secure grip in the hand and a relatively larger blade to drag through stuff. Both of these knives have everything that you would want in that regard. And so we'll talk about the performance differences, but I will say that the primary differences between these two knives are more aesthetic than functional. Let's go through those aesthetic differences first and then I'll close with the functional differences because there are differences. But again, I'll start with the aesthetic ones. First big difference is obviously the locking mechanism. Demco AD20S, you get the shark lock. I'll talk about the shark lock in detail in my AD20S review, but the shark lock is an exceptional lock in the sense that this is a completely rock solid lockup, no play whatsoever in any Demco manufactured shark lock I've ever had. Very simple to pull back, and you have a truly drop shut, flick out action. Now, roll it out, whatever. I think most people watching this, this by this point either know of the shark lock or have personally handled a shark lock and know all the things that are so great about this locking design, which really just comes down to the fact that it's a locking design that during the blade's travel limits sort of the amount of drag or force on that blade, which is how you can get a super, super secure lockup without with a very free action. The combination of those two things where you almost get like the freedom of a button lock, but with a much, much more secure lockup. Lots of positives for that. The big negative that most people will say about the shark lock is your opening action. You don't get that crisp detent break that you get with a good frame lock. With a frame lock, you've got a detent that you are overcoming and you're not opening, not opening, not opening until you break that detent and it crisply breaks and flies open. A spring is providing the detent on your shark lock, so it is a more rubbery opening. When you apply any force, the blade starts open and you can watch that shark lock travel there. And some people don't like that feel. If you use the Benchmades um, with their Axis Lock or any bar lock, it's quite similar to that feel. A little more fluid and rubbery than those bar locks, but it's similar. So there's mostly very, very significant pros to the Shark Lock with one very aesthetic con that honestly for some people is sort of a non-starter. Some people really don't like that feel on that opening. They like that crisp detent break. So if you don't like that, well then, the Project X has exceptional 2024 hinderer action. You've got a great flipper tab here, enough, enough uh, hook that your finger goes nicely in there. It's a nice big flipper tab, and you've got a relatively strong hinderer detent, not too strong, and a nice crisp detent break on bearings. This will, once you get past that detent, shake shut, and over time, as you work this in, it will drop shut as you break this in. I haven't oiled it. I haven't, you know, I've used it for quite a few days, but it's not like I have, I know from his, from my history with hinders that over the course of weeks and months, this will start to break into the point that it will be completely fall shut. So that difference between a really well done liner lock and a shark lock here is mostly aesthetic. Both of them have very secure lockup. Um, both of them can have a completely easy to use, easy to function, one-handed opening and closing action. It's sort of, would you prefer that more traditional crisp detent break um, and the sort of very fast but controlled action that you get out of a modern hinderer? As I described in our view, it's kind of like a heavier duty Shirogorov action. It's not super drop shotty like a Grimsmo or something like that. It's more in sort of like the Koenig or Shirogorov school of things, albeit not quite at that level, where it is a fast controlled action on barriers. And frankly, you've also got the option with the Hinderer Project X, where you can run it on Foster Braun washers or Teflon washers if you want that slower, even smoother, more controlled, more traditional action. 
Or do you want that super fidgety, super fast, super free flowing action that a shark walk gives you? Well, then your AD20S or any Demco is a great place to go for that. So that's the most obvious difference. The second most important difference though, or maybe even the most important difference is these handle designs, despite looking very similar, feel quite different. And it really comes down to the edges here. If you look at your Project X, big edges. Um, you know, the way that Hinderer cuts their scales, they're a flat scale with a relatively small chamfer here and then these big flats. Titanium, titanium, bigger chamfer on the titanium side. And if you get a full titanium scale, the chamfer will match. You can see smaller chamfer on the G10, bigger on the titanium side. But these are big flats. This is a big, heavy, chunky handle with big flats. And so this thing in your hand, it's kind of like an Emerson in the sense that this is really not going to budge. It doesn't want to rotate whatsoever. It doesn't want to move up and down. It doesn't want to pull forward. It doesn't want to pull back. This, it's not comfortable in the hand. You feel little edges throughout because a lot of the edges are quite sharp. But it is really, really confidence inspiring in the sense that this thing is not going to budge. By the way, I actually just kind of noticed how much, if I take away the butt, how much this kind of looks like the ranch buoy. This looks like a folding ranch buoy. I never quite noticed that until now. But anyway, I digress. This is a really secure feeling handle, especially under heavier use, and it is those big flats. The AD20, again, in all its forms, because your AD20S here and your full thickness AD20, same handle scales, just a thicker blade on your AD20. Bigger, first off, full G10 with just some liners here, but these scales are mostly G10, which is what contributes to this one being a little lighter. But you've got, instead of hinderer sort of wavy pattern, you've got a more traditional sort of diamond pattern here, less grippy, still grippy, but less grippy than hinderer's pattern. And you've got a larger, more rounded chamfer where this kind of just curves over onto here. And if you look at the flats, the fl truly flat part on your XM18, or sorry, on your Project X is larger than the truly flat part on your AD20S. The result is that this knife, whether you're posted back on the shark lock here or choking up in that front finger half choil, is probably more comfortable in the hand because there are no sharp edges. This is all nicely rounded off, but it also doesn't feel quite as secure. When you round off every edge like this, it does feel like this knife can ro rotate a little bit in my hand. You know, if I twist it sort of thing, it feels like it has that bit of rotation, especially down at the bottom of my hand here. It's filling up my hand about the same amount. These handles have very similar profiles, again. But with that greater rounding, it doesn't feel quite as secure. It feels like it can move a little bit. It feels like it can rotate a little bit. And I have found as I really push the AD20S, I do start to get a little bit squirrely as I really start to push it, particularly when I'm trying to sort of dig or curl and that rotational force is a major concern, which is often very common when I use these knives in the garden. It is more comfortable. You don't get any of those couple sharp edges, sharp, and sharp is a relative term, but you don't get any of those edges you can feel. But in exchange for that, it is not quite as locked in in the hand as your Project X is. So really, this feels a little more comfortable in the hand, the AD20S. The Project X feels a little bit more secure in the hand. The Project X, that one ounce difference, is also most, the extra ounce of weight this has, is also mostly in the handle. You know, this blade is thicker, so it's a little bit heavier, but I think most of that weight difference is in the handle. So this is a little more handle heavy, which also makes it feel a little bit more secure in the hand, but a little bit heavier. Um, so that's the second big difference. A little bit more comfortable, the AD20S, a little bit more secure, the Project X. Carry profile for both of these knives is quite similar. These are both big, heavy knives. The Project X is a little heavier, but in the pocket, the AD20S is actually a little bigger. 
And a lot of it has to do with the fact that most 8020S blade shapes will stick further out of the handle. You know, the Project X is a huge handle, but most of that blade nestles into sort of the general lines of this handle. With the 8020S, you have a significant amount of blade that is sticking out really beyond this line that these scales create. Um, I mean, I don't care about the pocket pecker or shot clock thing like that. That doesn't actually matter in the pocket. They're almost the exact same thickness. They're similar in weight, but I will say the AD20S consistently feels like a larger object in my pocket than the Project X does. It's a marginal difference because they're both big objects anyway, but the way that the blade sits relative to the handle with the blade sitting a little bit more proud in the AD20, I definitely notice my AD20S in my pocket more than I notice the Project X. The way it carries, the way it sits, it's a small difference, but if anything, the carry profile I find a little bit better on the Project X, despite it being a little bit heavier. Now, one other thing I should have mentioned on action, obviously this is a flipper tab and this is a thumb stud or slot opening. That's again, a matter of preference. Everything with the action is really a matter of preference. But then the biggest difference, and even though I've only got, you know, a couple different, but I do have, you know, I've got three AD20Ss here. Let me get my third. And I've got a full flat grind coming. You know, I've tried a bunch of AD20S blade shapes, and I've tried other blade shapes that I don't have with me in the past. Everything I'm about to say here is consistent across those blade shapes. I'll switch to the slicer for this next part. Again, the grinds on these knives, cutting performance is what I'm talking about. The grinds on both these knives are very, very good. And these are probably two of the sliciest large heavy duty knives that you're going to find on the market. In fact, I think, again, barring customs, like a John Gray Blood Shark, I can't think of other knives that I've encountered that are as heavy, as thick, as heavy duty as these knives that have similar levels of cutting performance. And that's honestly what you're always trying to balance with a heavy duty knife. I guess the one that would compare would be the Umnumzon. The Chris Reeve Umnumzon does have cutting performance just as good as these. I don't have, my Umnumzon is buried in a cabinet right now, so I can't bring it out. And the ergonomics on the Umnumzon are not in the same league as these. Um, my Umnumzon review will come up at some point, but long story short, love, 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 love the blade on the Umnumzon. Not a big fan of the handle. Anyway, these are two of the best sliciest blades, whatever blade design you get for the AD20S, because of how Demco consistently grinds his blades, that you're going to find in heavy duty, harder, harder use knives. And that is what you're always trying to balance with a heavy duty, harder use knife. You don't, uh, a hard use knife like what was commonly made in like the 2010s, when overbuilt knives were all the rage, when you know, you've got your old school XM18s, you know, your your old thick eclipses and stuff like that. Those were knives that were so thick that they couldn't cut anything. Frankly, a lot of hinderers are still like that today. As I said in my Hinder XM18 recurve review, a lot of them just, they're so thick, they're super overbuilt, but they don't cut. You And when you have a knife that doesn't cut, even with hard, do, hard use heavy duty tasks, every single task gets harder because you just have to push harder to get the same task done. What you want in a really good hard use knife is something that has that robustness, has that toughness, have that has that thickness, that, ins that confidence inspiring heavy duty feel, but still has really good cutting performance at the edge. These are two of the best you're going to find. They might be the two best that you can find right now. Again, the only other one I could think of that competes is the Umnumzon. But with even looking at every single AD20 blade shape that I have handled, and remember this is an AD20S, which has thinner blade stock, materially thinner blade stock than the Project X. The Project X still slices better out of the box than any AD20S I have ever handled, and significantly better than any full thickness AD20 that I have ever handled. The AD20 does a really, really good job 
of being a slicing knife. Let me just let me just you know cut something here. Like if I've got a note card here, this is a thick knife that you know it drags a little bit, and this needs a bit of a sharpening. Let me get my let me get one of the sharper ones. So this one here, if I've got that one, needs a bit of a sharpening. But if I take my drop point here. This slices fine for you know 120 thousandths, which isn't exactly thick stuff, but it's for a hard use knife. It slices fine. Take the Project X on the same note card here, and it just glides. And this is after using this Project X much more than I've used this particular AD20. And yet it still slices so much better. As I mentioned in my Project X review, it is actually difficult for me to overstate first how much better this Project X grind is than most hinderer grinds. And second, just how objectively amazing the grind on the Hinderer Project X is relative to hard use knives in general. The before I encountered the Project X, the AD20S was probably my choice for, you know, if somebody wants a heavy duty hard use knife that can still cut well, the AD20S was what I would send them to. The Project X has absolutely surpassed and usurped it and is clearly, to me, the sliciest heavy-duty hard-use knife that you are going to find on the market right now. Um, and when you consider that this blade here with 165,000 stock will outcut this knife here, the AD20S with 120,000 stock or 125 or wherever they ended up, it's just, it is, there's nothing negative to say about the AD20S. It's still a fantastic slicer for what it is, but the Project X is just on another level. And so when you add all of this up and you're choosing between these knives, again, I will come back to my starting point, which is that, oh, and then fit and finish. Let me just do fit and finish briefly because it's another thing that's quite similar. Demco is a little bit more utilitarian. Again, blade finish, very nice. Jimping, very nice, nicely cut. I like their sort of double stack jimping design here. The way they knock down the um, the opening holes, I love their thumb stud design. The finishing on everything, it's a little utilitarian. You know, I don't, you never love seeing quite this many screws, but I guess it's necessary for the lock mechanism, but it's a little utilitarian, it's a little simple, but everything is done quite nicely. The Project X, super, super tight, a little bit more beautiful with this sort of, with the milling, especially on this lock side. Everything is even just a little bit more flush and tighter. The blade finish is just a little bit shinier, more reflective. The blade designs tend to be a little bit more interesting. If anything, there's a very slight edge and fit and finish to the Project X, but we're talking, we're talking on the margins here. The fact is both of these are extremely well-made knives and you'll see no issues with fit and finish given the price that they're charging. To summarize, I'll go back to where I started. These are both very, very good knives. And you're not going to be unhappy with either one of them as long as you are you know what you're buying, which is a heavy-duty, hard-use knife that is slicey enough to still do everyday carry tasks that is also big, you know, five to six ounces, takes up a lot of space in the pocket, is expensive, but you're paying for quality, you're paying for made in the USA, and you're paying for something that can do those hard use tasks while still being a little bit more versatile than quote unquote overbuilt knives. That's what you're paying for, that's what you're buying. These are both exceptional articles within that framework. There are two clear reasons to get the AD20. I guess maybe three if I can think of one. It's a little bit lighter, though I do think the carry profile is worse on the AD20S than the um, Hinderer. It's a little bit lighter. There are more blade profiles out there. If you don't like this clip point for some reason, you've got tons of options um, for the AD20S for blade profile. And you've got the Shark Lock. And the Shark Lock is super secure, super fidgety. It's kind of the platonic ideal of lock designs for a lot of people. Some people hate it, but a lot of people absolutely love it. And it's as secure as you would want with while well, giving you that fast fidgety action. The, I guess the one last thing, which is a bit of a rounding air, rounding factor, is there is more of an aftermarket for AD20S scales than there is for Hinderer Project X at this point. That will probably change over time as Hinderer really ramps up production. But 
In terms of major differentiating factors, it's really the variety of blade shapes and the shark lock are the reasons to choose the AD20S, and they're compelling reasons. Demco's blade designs are really cool and happen to be also quite functional. The shark lock is a fantastic locking design. But in every other sense, these two knives are close. But I consistently think that the Project X is a little bit better. The carry profile, because of the way this blade snugs up in the handle, is a little bit better on the Project X. The action, um, I mean, I'm going to call it, I won't even call the action better. But the action is, it's a really good action on the Project X. The fit and finish, very similar but if anything, slightly better on the Project X. The blade grind and the blade, or no, the ergonomics. Let's, let's do ergonomics. The ergonomics on the Project X, a little bit less comfortable, but for what you're really using these knives for, which is you assume you're gonna be pushing them, very similar, but if anything, a little bit better on the Project X. But the biggest difference is that blade performance. The cutting performance on the Project X in use feels a little better. Always better, but in when you, especially when you try to use those, you know, less hard use chores when you're trying to flex this knife into lighter duty chores and you really want slicing performance a little bit more, the actual real slicing performance of the Project X is meaningfully better than any blade shape I've handled on the AD20, and that's even comparing it to the AD20S, which has thinner blade stock to begin with. So. The price difference between these is honestly pretty immaterial. $450 versus $500. And frankly, most of the retailers that you're buying this from, you're going to be paying tax and stuff like that. Like it's going to make the difference even smaller uh, in the sense that, you know, you're north of 500 bucks after tax and shipping and all that probably for both of these knives. Every, unless you really like the Shark Clock, the differences are marginal. But in every case I've seen, the differences favor the Project X. I do think the Hinderer Project X is probably just a slightly better knife than the AD20S. Um, I guess the AD20S also has a half finger troil, makes it a little easier to get close on the ergonomics. But I just, I like the handle design more on the Project X. I'm, I'm digressing. The fact is, the differences between these knives are small, but I think that they consistently, where they exist, consistently favor the Project X. So really, if it comes down to it, if you like the Shark Lock, your choice is obviously made for you. If you like Demco's blade shapes, your choice is made for you. If you hate flippers and you really want a thumb stutter hole opening, then your choice is made for you. If you just want a really good, really versatile, really tough, hard use knife that is made in the USA and you're willing to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of $500 for your knife, I really do think that most people are going to be happier with the cutting performance in particular that they get, and to a little extent the ergonomics that they get, out of a Hinderer Project X over the AD20S. And I will say, that is not the conclusion that I thought I was going to come to before I got the Hinderer Project X. It's certainly not the conclusion I, came to, I thought I would come to even when I first got it. But it was really when I started using this and I felt how good those ergonomics were, and in particular how extraordinary the cutting performance of this Project X Blade is, given the thick stock that it has, that really has elevated this to me to be probably the best generally accessible high-end production hard-use knife that is out there right now. Um, there are plenty of good choices. You've still got the Unings on in there. You've got other hinderers. You've got the SNG. And I shouldn't say the best because, you know what? I shouldn't say it's the best because it's been a while since I've tried an SNG. And I did really like the SNG a while back. So I'm going to limit my statement and say, okay, if you're looking at these two knives, which are very similar, I think most people are going to be a little happier with the Project X. Unless you really like the Shark Lock. And if that's the case, get the Denko. That's the point of this video. I won't make it any bigger than that. At some point, I'll get my hands on a strider and then I can make a bit of a more authoritative statement. But this is really just another video in a way to say how much I like the Project X, how impressive this is, and the people that are in this particular market should really, really give it a shot. Because I think a lot of people have really come to appreciate with what Demco has done here. Demco's pretty unique in the market ability to combine heaviness of use case with slicing performance 
Demco has done a really, really good job of that with the AD20S, but I think a lot of the people that like the AD20S for that are going to find even more to like in the Hinderer Project X. And so that's the point of this video. And if you're looking at one of those two knives and you want to know the differences between them, those are my thoughts. Those are my opinions. Would love to hear about yours in the comments. Let me know what you've observed, what you felt, how you've enjoyed using these knives, or if you're just curious about anything else about the differences between them. Hope you found this helpful. Got a little more rambly than I wanted, but most of my videos tend to. Um, this has been Clark the Knife. Again, hope you found this helpful. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.